Thank you for joining our virtual program this morning. I'm Teddy Izinga. I work at the Hudson Area Library. Uh, before we get started, I do want to share two things. Uh, first, this Zoom meeting is being recorded, so we can post it to the library's YouTube channel later. And uh, second, this project is supported by a grant from the Fund for Columbia County of the Berkshire Taconic Community Foundation and it is offered in partnership with the Role of Jansen Community Library, the Claverick Free Library, and the Philmont Public Library. This program is about memory books, what they are, how to make them, and how they can be helpful for a person dealing with progressive memory loss. If we have time at the end, I'd also like to share some additional advice on activities and other tips it may be helpful for people caring for loved ones with Alzheimer's or another form of memory loss. November is Alzheimer's Awareness Month, but these kits are helpful year round and, and for any person experiencing memory loss for practically any reason. Reminiscing and talking about the past helps us strengthen our memories about those events, and it's never a bad time to start collecting your memories. Especially if a lot of your photos are stored digitally, making a physical memory book can be really meaningful. For a person experiencing memory loss, a memory book or memory box can help record and communicate their life story and as well as important in people, places, and things. They can also be a lot of fun to put together and look at later. Um, I'm going to be drawing a lot of specific information from a fantastic introduction to memory books and other tips on caring for loved ones with memory loss from Alzheimer's Arkansas, and I'll be putting a link to their fantastic pamphlet, Making the Most of Memories, Creating Memory Books and Activity Kits in the chat and in the video description when this is on YouTube. Their website is alzark.org. And I'll also be sharing a link for a great how-to on creating memory boxes from the Cedar Hill Continuing Care Community in Vermont, where I got a lot of great pointers. Um, this program isn't just for caregivers or those wanting to connect with a family member who's experiencing memory loss. Memory books and memory boxes are a great activity to do together, and they can also be made by one person for themselves. So what is a memory book? And how does it help? A memory book is a lot like a classic scrapbook. It's a collection of information about a person's personal history, their family and their life and experiences. It can include photos, paper memorabilia, and notes from the person about their memories and their experiences. It tells anyone who reads it about the creator's likes and dislikes, their interests, their work history, and it identifies family and friends. And not only does this help remember your life story, but it also serves as a storybook for future generations. The activity of making memory books and memory boxes, which I'll talk about in a little bit, can be just as important as looking through them later. If you're helping someone else make them, it's a great chance to focus on that purpose, their life, their unique experiences. We all have basic emotional needs including the need to feel self-worth, the need to express your thoughts and your feelings, the need to feel a sense of accomplishment, and the need to belong. Making memory books is one type of activity that centers not just the memories themselves, but the person who experiences them. A memory book can be a helpful tool to both the individual diagnosed with Alzheimer's and to their family. Uh, the purpose of the memory book is to provide a record of the per individual's personal history. And this can be especially helpful if the disease is progressing and memory loss is increasing. In addition, the activity of making the book and reminiscing about it can be rewarding and fulfilling to the caregiver. And while putting these books together, it's really nice to do it with another person so that you can share the stories and talk about the people and the events that you include. So physically, what do you need in order to make a memory book? You'll want a three ring binder. You'll want some clear plastic sheet protectors, colored paper to be the base of the pages, plain paper to write notes on, tape and glue so you can connect things, uh, scissors, pens, markers, all your sort of crafty materials. If you have that cool washi tape or stickers, you can include that too. 
And then the most important thing is the pictures, the tokens, um, small paper memorabilia, like for instance, like a wedding program, um, anything else that you know helps you identify events and uh, are meaningful to you. And then once you have those things, what do you want to include? You want things, you want to put your family and friends, your big life events. You might go places I've lived, places I've visited, all the different sorts of things. It's not just a linear narrative. You'll want to include basically everything. Um, but one thing that is helpful is that this is something you can put together over time. Um, oops, I got a little. There we go. Um, you can always add new pages to a three ring binder. This is why it's such a helpful thing. Is you can always be on the lookout for important stories and memories that occur or are remembered, and you can plan time to capture them and add them to the book. Um, one thing you want to do, just take it a page at a time. If you don't have a lot of time, just you can plot it out or you can just go with what inspires you. Um, you'll want to, if you're making it for yourself, write a letter to yourself or to your loved ones on any inspiring topic. Um, and think about what's important to you and why that part is important to you. Describe not just the facts of an event, who was there, what was the weather like, but also your feelings about it. If you have photos, talk about who's in them. And uh, if you have tokens or memorabilia, look through them and think about the event. Um, but saying all that, where do you start any creative project? This is kind of the big question. Um, you might start with a cast list of the people, the important people in your lives. You might draw a little timeline, but then also ask yourself or the person who's making the book um, sort of prompting questions. What do you feel proud of? What do you want people to know about you? What are your favorite memories? And you can also interview other people and you know, ask for their input as well. Once you, so once you have a good number of recollections about a topic, whether you've written a little letter or you've identified everybody in a picture, um, glue or tape the, the items all together to the big colored paper and slide that into the plastic sleeves, just like a scrapbook. Um, you can also decorate the cover with stickers and drawings. Um, you can, and you'll, you'll want to bring it out and share it with your loved ones. So you can have daily routines and you can have weekly routines. So it can be like every week, you know, spend half an hour adding a new page or every other day, you know, make some time to look through it and reminisce together. Um, and when you revisit it, talk about the memories and the stories that your, the images bring up. And you can always add more pages later. Um, and you can also always change the order. Um, but that can be a fun activity to sort of regroup things, move them around once you have a whole lot of pages. Um, let's see. Um, I did mention memory boxes before. Um, and they are similar to the memory book, um, but they are more like a treasure chest. And you'll want to put larger three-dimensional objects in there that you can pick up and sort through as opposed to just turning page by page. Um, the main difference is it's just a box of objects instead of pictures and notes. It can be, it should include objects that can be handled and that will bring back specific memories. Um, so Let's see, some things you'll want to include are papers and postcards, letters, photos, um, toys, um, sporting equipment like an old baseball or um, a, a hairbrush that you remember, items with fragrance, so if you have like a lavender sachet um, or a unique texture, um, things that you can pick up and talk about the stories connected to them. Um, and you'll want to be on the lookout for things that are not irreplaceable. So if something is um, unique, you might want to find something similar, but don't put like your last little China toy in there. Um, you'll want things that are easy to handle, not too heavy. You don't want to drop them and break them. 
Um, you'll want to keep things that are um, linked to positive memories that are significant. Um, things with interesting textures. So for instance, a piece of satin from a favorite dress, a furry stuffed animal, um, a metal uh, pocket tape measure. And these, these are things that can help trigger sense memories by holding them. Um, and one thing you'll, you might also want to include in the box is a, um, a list of things that are there. So you, and you might want to label them. Um, so Billy's baseball, mother's necklace, this is your gardening trowel, uh, this is a seed packet from, uh, from your flower garden. Um, you might want to have a laminated list or have tags that you can attach to the objects. Stickers do fall off though, so be aware of that. Um, and um, one thing that you'll also want to keep an eye out for to not include um, is things that you could uh, break or things that might be mistaken for food. Recipes are also a great thing to put in here. Um, you can build, build a recipe box and you can make a theme. You can have as many memory boxes as you want. Um, you can have a theme for family. You can have you know, a seaside theme, um, vacations, um, holidays, favorite sports. Um, you'll want to keep these in um, durable containers. I think I've got that on my next slide. Um, uh, durable containers like shoe boxes or um, nice size uh, Tupperware containers um, or jewelry boxes, things that you can handle, things that you can open, um, and things that are easy to exciting to to bring out and share. Um, and similar, and, and so now shifting over out of personal memories into more activities, um, these are things that you can build and create um, uh, sort of as, as like little fun activities to do throughout the day. Uh, let me find my note on that one. Um, let's see, so things like, like what I've got here on this slide, um, a matching and sorting kit. Um, and and these, these are kits that you might make for yourself or these I think are geared a little bit more towards uh, caretakers looking for activities to do with a person who's suffering from memory loss. So matching and sorting games, um, you could have a clay kit. They make some really good um, plays that are similar to Play-Doh, they don't dry out quickly. So you can mix the colors, you can um, make little statues, and you can keep them out for a little while and on display, and you can also remold them as often as you like. Um, you can have a knot tying kit with some um, not too thin little cords to practice. I don't know if you were a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout to kind of keep those memories moving in your hands and your mind. Um, a toolkit so you can do some light crafting, um, foam quilt patterns, you can plan a quilt pattern um, or sort of play tanagrams. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those. They're like these um, like foam or small plastic shapes that you can make designs out of or they, they often come with um, a, little, a little set of cards that you can, it challenges you to recreate the shape of the cat with these um, abstract triangles and squares is a fun one. Uh, you can create a sift and find box uh, by putting rice or unpopped popcorn in with some small items that you can sift through and find them. Um, and then you can also um, scented, uh, scented lotion. I don't want to miss that step. Uh, it's great for hand massages. So it's a bonding experience and it also um, a lot of different scents are, can bring back some very strong memories. Um, you'll also want to keep an eye out for, you know, just things, things to do, things, ways to feel engaged and connected to the world. So folding laundry, um, sorting silverware, uh, especially for um, people who are in a household who are looking for ways to um, keep people occupied. Um, just small, helpful activities that feel connected to everyday life. So gardening, taking care of pets, um, 
just so that you can feel um, engaged in your familiar and meaningful routines. I'll also want to share some um, other tips and tricks from the Alzheimer's Arkansas pamphlet, which I will um, share a link to, which is a great resource. Um, some of the things that they say are that um, long term memory is often better preserved than short term memory. So focus on well learned skills. You'll want things that aren't too long, things that can be done in half an hour or less to keep things moving, keep things um, focused. Um, the activities that are familiar and repetitive and don't need a lot of decision making are good activities when you're working with someone who is um, who is suffering from memory loss. Um, so sweeping and vacuuming. And so these are more of the household stuff, going back to feeling connected to your everyday life. It's also important that when you're looking out for activities to keep them on an adult level. You don't want to, you don't want to patronize people. Um, you want to keep the feeling of doing as much as you can on your own. Um, patience and flexibility are important. Um, feel, it's, you can always redirect um, and move back to things that are exciting. So, so some of the activities listed um, in this Alzheimer's Ar Arkansas pamphlet, which I'll, I'll share, are things like um, sorting silverware, caring for plants, polishing shoes, uh, writing letters, um, listening to books on tape, which I'll plug the library here. We have a lot of good audio books on CD and on tape uh, to go back to familiar stories or, or, or exciting new ones as well. Um, sorting and wrapping coins is a fun one. Um, just empty the wrappers out, um, resort them, just keep, you know, 10 or $15 in pennies or quarters. Um, that's a fun activity. Um, and similar to the memory boxes is having a little display corner of things that are important to the person with Alzheimer's so that they can, they, this can be their, their corner of things that they decorate, things that they put on display, things that are interest them. So small collections or, or photos and frames um, that they can rearrange and come back to as often as they want. Um, so, so, so the memory boxes and the memory books can be part of that. So you can make it a tradition to come back to that, add a new page, reminisce, bring it out when you have family over, um, and bring it out as often as you want to go through things and remember them. Um, the goals of all of these activities are to um, engage and connect with your memories and the people around you to create routines and structures, but also express yourself creative creatively um, and record record your life story and come back and reminisce as often as you need to and as often as you want to. Um, telling stories of the important events in your life, weddings, birthdays, exciting vacations, um, and recording in, in the books, you can have a page on your political and religious opinions, on your likes and dislikes, your favorite recipes, um, so many different things, um, anything that you want and nothing that you don't want. Um, so um, the, the most important thing I think that has come up in all of my research for this is to talk and listen and give love. I do hope that this has given some information and inspiration for how to start making your own memory book. There's no one right way to make them. You can make as many as you want. You can have tiny little ones. You can have giant ones. It's all about what's inspiring to you and the things that are meaningful for you. And if, and if you're helping someone else make them, the things that are inspiring and meaningful for them.